Welcome back and in this video we'll pick up where we left off in the previous video and talk more about treating and interpreting costs in Synchro. Now in order to do that we want to add some more costs than we did in the previous video so I'll just add a bunch of other activities, uh, activity costs, so I'll just add some numbers. Now you can't really add something directly to the parent but you can for example add a resource to a parent, for example the laborer here. And even though air coolers is 5,000, the budgeted total cost is 45. Uh, I'm not going to do that, so in order to avoid that, a good idea is to go to list mode. Add a lot of costs and then go back to WBS mode. So I'm going to add the general labor to all of the tasks. And also I'm going to fill down some of these costs over here. And also, I'll add some costs to these material resources. And I'm adding random numbers here just because we're using this for example's sake. So I'll customize columns, and I'll search for cost, and we can add cost and cost type, and I'll bump them up in the list over here. So now we have those columns over here. And I'll just go ahead and expand those and add costs over here. So I'll just right click and expand all and just fill down that cost all the way to the bottom. Now you can also switch to list mode in the resources tree as well or to resource codes mode. This is a new feature and we made a video about that as well. So also to answer a common question, yes, it's possible to change the cost type in bulk as well. So for example, let's say I want this to be a daily cost. I choose one and then I can fill down just like we did for the cost. So now we have a lot more costs to look at. So we're going to go back to our original topic. Let's go to WBS mode. And again, you can visualize by scope, or you can go here and just show filter tasks or all tasks. Now to visualize, to drill down in the costs, for example, of that task, we see 3000 here, but 25,000 here. We can't really go to task properties costs like we did earlier, because this is just for fixed costs. Here we have to go to task properties and cost totals, which is this pie chart over here. So here we see a breakdown of all the direct costs and the resource costs as well and their types. And if we want a breakdown for the entire project, then it's going to be on this side and it's in navigator, project and costs. We see a breakdown with the direct costs, the resources costs and the material costs, which we just added. And of course, if you scroll a bit to the right, you can see the total amounts for each one. So we can interpret the breakdowns for the project on this side, for the tasks specifically on that side. If we select a bunch of tasks, then it shows us the su summary of those tasks. If we select the parent, it does that as well. So it's pretty handy. Now, if you select the whole project, assuming that this is the parent activity, it should be fairly similar on either side. Now, what's left here is to interpret costs from the earned value graph as well. So we see different legend items, but really only one curve. So this is the planned value, meaning that this is the cost associated to each task spread over time as it is planned. The earned value will consider how much of those activities you're com you've completed and will disregard how much you've actually spent because it's actually a schedule metric with dollar value units. And then the actual costs, we'll look at that in the next video, detailing how to actualize costs and schedules. So I'll kind of skip over that for now. And then baseline cost is to evaluate multiple baselines or scenarios. So let's uh, look at earned value and baseline cost. To have a baseline, I'm first going to select all tasks and simply go to 
plan and baseline selected tasks and you can change the name I usually change to describe the baseline name over here for example say a uh, one original sequence and I keep the data date in the name just so that I have it and now we can show the baseline it's exactly overlapping with the red line which is plant value and to make them different for example I'll assume that we're gonna start for example the main structure a little bit later than what is actually planned so I'll just drag it and constrain it and then reschedule and now we see that the two graphs become different they end up at the same number because we didn't really affect planned units or durations or any of that cost we just affected how it was distributed over time so the baseline is different than the planned value and the new red line is the new planned value now let's actualize some activities if I mark these as completed for example I usually don't like to do that if you don't move the data date because that doesn't make any sense so I'll start by moving the data date a bit so I'll go here let's move it by two months for example and now the blue line is over here which means that it makes sense for us to status any task that occurred before that so I'll select those and progress them and finish those tasks and we can choose specific dates for each one or the plant start and the plant finish I'll just stick to the plant stuff and we see the blue line over here rise up now let's interpret this graph a little bit uh, some things may pop up to mind for example why is the blue line activated and raised up although we haven't talked about actuals yet and why does it not perfectly match the gray line and that's because part of the actual costs is actually automatically updated and part of it has to be manually updated. We'll talk about that in the next video. Now another question will come up is why is the earned value graph up until the data date different than the planned value although we started them exactly on the same dates. That's because there are other activities that fall in that time period that are contributing to that planned value. So if I show that graph for example only for the selected tasks the earned value becomes very they're actually all very similar but if we show them one by one the earned value is overlapping exactly with the planned value because we chose the exact dates now if we look at the project as a whole at this point in time for example the earned value According to what we status, we didn't status all, all the activities, but according to what we status, the earned value is less than the planned value, which means that we have completed less work than we had promised we would have completed, which means that the project is delayed. It doesn't mean that we're uh, under budget. That's a completely different story that's related to actuals. It just means that the project is delayed. In the next video, we'll look at more in the next video, we'll look more in depth into actuals and cost controls. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you and see you next time.